I'm ready. I already know you are. That's good, right? Yes. Yes, I believe that from nothing in Christ. I'm an adolescent with my sleeping in the same room with my parents. Yes, I, I am closer to my parents, but no love is expressed to me. I go to school after hearing a series of things that depress my parents, school fees, problems that they face that I can't even handle, but I get to give it to them. I come back in the evening. After a long time of stress, but of stress, but my parents don't even actually give me that time. Because the moment I arrive at home, my mom wants me to do that, pick that, pick that. They no longer care if I'm right, if I'm sick. They don't care. The only thing they do care about is do that. Yes. Me as a child and as a teenager, I will bring my friends at home. Let us discuss this number. Let us move this way. But how can I bring my, my friends to a single world? It is actually mentally disturbing. I actually accept the fact that it is what God God and I need that. But my parents, I no longer get that time with a child that sees me. Because they see me as a usual kid. What I would advise, really parents, if you can, let the children be in public schools because there is a lot of stress that they can't handle. If they are living in a single room with you, please do care about them. Don't expose content that is irrelevant to them because it is too heavy and it is a bigger burden for them to carry. They go to school. It is actually affecting their grades, degrading their mental states that you know. You no longer care about their issues because you see them every day. They are becoming not for people. Parents. I'm in no state of saying that what we do is wrong. But most times, the content we portray in our kids, they are becoming familiar to us. And an adolescent doesn't have to see a mother and a father having them. But we are in the single room. I'm an adolescent. I know how it feels. I understand that my mom, my dad, is doing this and this. It is mentally suppressing me. It's most times my dad comes back at home with my, with my mom at night, but I'm watching. There is no privacy of parents discussing big matters, big issues, and all involved in it. Mom, Dad, sit down as parents. Let children grow in a conducive environment. Let them have the time or the city. Give them the respect they deserve because they can't respect you if, they, if you don't respect them back. They can't attain that respect or give it to any other person else if yourself you don't portray it. I see my mom in the page. Why? How would I respect anybody else? Parents, stay out. Thank you so much. Our number seven. Living together, your mother and your dad. My mother and dad in the same room makes me feel uncomfortable. But I have a say to my parents how they can make me feel, uh, how they can make me, how, can, how they can adjust, how they can work with me, and how they can solve that. Probably, if money is there, I would advise my parents to construct at least another room on our house so that I get a separate room as an adolescent. Or if money is in construction is not there, at least they can rent a house next to theirs. Or I can be taken to a boarding school and concentrate and maybe I'll feel comfortable to stay with, with my peers and not to stay with my mother in the same room. I am neglected and I would like to call upon them to spare some time in their children to give me some talk, some informal education and to nurture me, to tell me those words that can encourage me to improve my grades in school. To at least give me that parental advice. Because as a child, I cannot stand when my parents are not giving me any value advice. So I call upon them to 
to at least spare the time, no matter how little it is, but to give you those words that can help me out, get out of that state of feeling neglected. With, with the, those words, if they are if they are, they are in line with my problems, I think at the end of the day, I'll be able to improve in my grades. So it's their, it's their role to spare, to, to make me sit down and tell me the challenges. Uh, and I tell them the challenges and they give me the solutions. Because I may not be able to tell them. I may be able to tell what I'm going through, but I may not be able to get myself out of it. So, the role of a parent is to start by looking in the challenges. Indeed, situations come and go. Whatever doesn't kill you makes you stronger. My name is Shamsaka I like and say I was busy. I was busy, but not in a way most people understand. I was busy taking deeper breaths. I was busy silencing irritational thoughts. I was busy calming a racing heart. I was busy telling myself I'm okay. Sometimes I don't apologize for it because I know what I'm wrong. My mom used to tell me, Michael, be alert. Don't, alert. don't let people be your problems. Don't let them be your problems and don't ever allow their problems to affect you through their actions and words. My mom told me to be happy. My mom told me those words six years ago, but they still go in my head 12 hours a day. Unfortunately, my mom was near to her grave due to the disease that is not in her grave. My mom had to leave me with my dad in this miserable hour. Since I was so lonely and sad, my dad had to get me a new mom. But the day I got a new mom is the day I regret in my life. The day I got a new mom is the day I learned that even someone can be touched emotionally. My new mom showered me with love and care. And I was very happy to have such a mom. Most of the times, my dad would spend his time with me, but not the new mom, since I was the only child he had. My new mom would feel bad about it, even though she would just put a fat smell to fit in the family. Time came when my dad had to leave to go about his businesses again. He had to attend with his business. Growing up on the streets of Chisini downtown Kampala Central, my turn to go fear of my childhood. With fear of going home to my own area due to the pain and suffering that I received when I was growing up to that age. After a certain time, I went back to my home area, thinking that there is some improvement, but it was so absurd that nothing had changed at all. I got a chance to be taken back to school, but while at school, all I could think about and all I could do is to think about the criticism of my parents, the neglect, the toxicity, the rudeness, and it's all over my head, exclusive focus on my academics. Being forced to do subjects that I really don't want 
being forced to do things that I am not in my in my city just because my parents have to believe that only the successful people are those that take these combinations. But why? Why? I be, being refused to take on something that I really think that can be in my direction. So just because my parents are thinking it's going to take me astray and also it's going to lead me to total failure. Why? How will I be able to how will I be able to manage myself if I'm not given a chance to express myself in, in front of everyone? How will I be beneficial to the country and to my people if I'm not given a chance to show up my ideas to every person? How will I be productive if I don't have a sense of privacy in my own area? My dear parents, I really appreciate the love you have for me. But at a certain moment, the love is my exceeding. I call upon you, my friends, to come and start with me, for I need your guidance in this life. If I told you to do criticism in my life, it's going to be somehow, somewhere, it's going to lead me astray for what I'm going to be in the future. I have known that you will not be there. My dear parents, I call upon you to come and stand with me, for if I told your toxicity is all that I'm having, I'm getting demoralized, I'm losing my sense of creativity, and I'm losing each and everything that I can do for my, for my life and for my children. For if I'm to be the light of the world, I really need your proper guidance, why I cannot seek for guidance anywhere else other than you, my parents, who are my truly and biological parents. My dear lady, if I'm truly, for you're truly my biological parents, for the elder bird teaches the young one how to fly, I call upon you to help me fly through this, this world in a proper direction. Thank you very much. Alright. Okay, I'll begin in three, two, one. I don't know whether my life is going to be like this, but I believe my life is cheating on me. I feel a lot of potential, I know it's just that you know that I have that young way to do it. I feel I'm a lot of a child, even though I live in a single home. I feel like my life is headed to a door. These days, I sit in class and I'm ready to be like, like, say, can't even go back to the same sex of the way that you have to teach us to have fun. It's kind of like I'm in this one of my own sporadic for my friends. Something that me for me. Simply because my parents have been posing me a little planet, which currently I feel like the beauty of a world. My literature teaching also told me that no matter the situation in life, you keep moving forward. Because the little bit of steps that I'm going to take are what I'm going to push me forward. Because I believe my sleep is what I'm going to stay in. I'm not static and I'm going to be able I need to sit my parents down and tell them to look me in the eye and tell them this is the creation and decide what they are going to bring out of this art and it's the creation of which they're going to make something more prosperous in life. It's the creation of which they want to have a name to and attach to. This is the creation of which I am. I am me and they can't pass that. I've been pushed to levels of extremity whereby I've reached a level that I feel it's just simply more. I need to tell them about my rights as a child and the fact that they need to value the rights that I put in for to them. I need to tell them that I am who I am and that I have my limits. And as a person, I am humane. And when my limits are passed, I simply begin to fail in this kind of life. I need to tell them my fears as well. That it's simply my personality. If they don't like it, then I need to understand what this can be done. But as for me, it really hurts me the way how I live today, the way how I am today. I'm that person who my parents tell me want to be the great public speaker, but right now, someone here is suffering. Simply because they were bothering me too much of a burden and I can't bear to myself. <coughs> In the end of the day, I wouldn't want to be that nerd that walks. I wouldn't want to be that nerd that, that sits by the trash cans, living on the trash, even up by the rich people. I want to be the man that works in the city with his head held high, talking about the successes he's made in life and what the parents, what my parents have made before. That is the kind of personality I want to bring for the day. So my parents need to understand my limits. My parents need to know that I am Jonathan Kick, right? I'm not somebody else. No, I am me. 
I have my limits, and my limits have been passed, and my limits need to be put in line. That is the whole essence of my life. Because I am taking my steps starting now. My parents need to be there to witness the way how I'm suffering. And in the end of it all, I am not going to succeed. Because I move forward.
can just move down from there in grades, in a social status. Literally, no one understands what I'm going through. I can't talk to them, can I? Hey, they can't do this anymore. Hey, my mom and my child, my parents, both my mom and my dad, they have siblings. And I know Uncle Ryan has money. Why do they try, you know, to put aside their pride, to put aside their ego, and try to see maybe, maybe, he may be able to help us? I know they can't talk to me about it, because I'm their child, anything about submissiveness, but even they can talk to each other. You think I can't hear them whispering in the night? You think I can't hear her crying? I can't. It's breaking me. It's breaking me slowly by slowly, every single bit, and I can't. I can't take it. I'm about to finish from six. There are alternative housing, <coughs> alternative housing options I can look at. Vocational schools. There are multiple online programs I can look at. Maybe, maybe if I just told them about it, maybe they'll have my back. Maybe if we just sat aside, even just outside as a family, we could talk. Maybe that would be enough. Thank you. Thank you. Uh you know, food is food with salt and meat. But food is more good when there is enough salt and meat. It's not that I don't want to stay with my family. But sometimes I feel like I have to. But sometimes I feel like I have to. For me to sleep in the same room with my parents, it makes me uncomfortable sometimes. I'm bullied at school. Because of sleeping with my parents in the same room. Students tease me, and as they tease me, it leads to lose attention to that, to something that is being taught. Hence leading to decrease in my maths. I don't know if I should say this, but I wish my parents were rich. I was born by a poor family, I was born in a poor family with a poor mom and a poor dad, with a poor background. Sometimes I wish that if my parents could take me to the village, where my grandfather built at least a big house, where I can get along with at least my siblings, at least I can get along with my cousin, but not along with my parents. Sometimes I feel like sleeping, Sleeping in the same room with my parents at night, it makes me like feel uncomfortable. How can I? When time comes for sleeping, it's like I'm somewhere that I don't deserve to be. I wish my parents would take me to at least a boarding school, but they don't have money. I wish they could take me to the boarding school so that I can spend some of my time. The most of my time at school, so that I can do, so that I don't disturb them in the same room. I'm tired of sleeping in the same room with my parents. If I go to the place where my uncle built a bigger house, it will make me at least company. It will make me at least perform much in class because I'll not be good anymore by my fellow students. The environment people will not is talking as many words that they, that they are talking about me right now. I wish my parents could at least take me to my sister's home. At least she has their husband with some money. I can get my own room in their house. I'm tired of sleeping in the same room with my parents. Thank you. Constricting. Four walls constantly collapsing, closing down on my life. Four walls. Four walls that house the ones closest to me right now. Four walls that are constricting me emotionally, physically, and mentally. These four walls tightening their grip around me like a python. Tightening their grip around me like a python. I can see the fangs of life slowly dripping, oozing with poison. Four walls. 
four walls. I like in which the people closest to me, my dear family, my parents, my siblings, are the ones who are restricting me, the ones who are limiting me. Four walls. Four walls in which I come back every day after a long day at school, sweaty, tired. I just want to rest. Four walls. Four walls in which I come back to, to a negative, compact, and shut up environment. To an environment in which productivity cannot be existing. Productivity is limited. Four walls. Four walls in which this organization is deharmonized, desynchronized. Four walls. And I ask you, do you think I wish for this, this upon me? Do you think I want this? And it's the people closest to me that are inhibiting this, my parents. And I ask you, why? There are better ways to live than this. There are better ways to coexist, to coexist, to cohabit, to in live, to exist. There are better ways than this. And I wonder why? Why can't they just reach and ask for help in hand, put down their pride? Why can't they just ask our aunts, our relatives? Why can't they ask for help? It's pride. They can't put down their pride to ask their own family members for money. And I understand we are not in the best financial situation. But there are solutions. I can go to work. They do not realize that I can lift this body off of them. I do not want to bother them with my troubles. I don't want to harass them with constant complaints. And I know that they are already stressed. I know that they are trying their best. I don't want to harass them. But there are other solutions. I wish you could see. I wish that they could see that just harmonize and synchronize and organize our room. Small as it is, organize. Organization, a way of making the most crazy things make sense. I wish they could see. I wish they could see that this constrictiveness is bothering me, both physically, mentally, and socially, making me wonder how I'm supposed to be the man they want me to be. How am I supposed to lift them up? How am I supposed to build a house for mommy? How am I supposed to build a house for daddy when I know that I am bothered? So, the things that I've said now, I wish to tell you, for all I really need. To speak out, I need my voice to be heard and supposed to be Thank you, Maria. Adults, they are just young children, our own children, that are developing into adults, like how you are. You are also ones like that. Sometimes you aren't understood. Yes, they are our children. But the question, is how they are developing in mind, in body, and socially when they meet with others. And how can we help them develop into responsible and upright adults as we wish them to be? Now, the way we tend, the way we tend to treat them as parents may sometimes be not the way they want us to treat them. It may be an inconvenience to them in a way that we cannot understand we as parents. Dear parents, we cannot understand them as they say. So we as parents should first question ourselves and how we treat the young adults. Do they like what we do to them? Do we understand them? Do we take time to listen to them? To guide them and counsel them? into the right path. So, this is the way forward. First of all, we shouldn't confront these young people, for they are troubled with a lot of things in their minds. Ladies and gentlemen, this issue is like when a flag is on the scrotum and you're trying to kill it using a gun, and you know how vital the scrotum is. Ladies and gentlemen, parents, may we fight for their well-being, their upright growth, and they feel, sometimes they feel unsafe, maybe we fight, maybe we quarrel, they feel unsafe, maybe mom is going to, mom is going to fight with daddy, and they will divorce and she will go away, or maybe no one to talk to, yeah, maybe, uh, maybe we confront them sometimes, so parents, if we confront them, it will be in case creating more harm than good.
self progression is better than ours. So, in all this, so as parents, let us indulge. Parents should avail more time to their children so that they can find more ways of bonding with them. So as they may successfully develop into a parent adult. Thank you. Okay, I shall begin my speech in three, two, one. Sometimes I just want to run away. It's like I can't breathe. The thoughts I have living with parents trying to impose their 19th lifestyle on a 21st century child. I come here today not as a survivor, not as someone with a vast amount of experience to blow your way. I come here as someone worried for my future. I am worried because I am living a lifestyle that is detrimental to my future. My father came in the other day. Apparently, from now on, he is to check my phone and regard which people I should talk to. Without even informing me, he put this upon himself to carefully regulate my life. I tell this because it shows the scale at which my parents not only neglect me, but try to control me. I'm having stress outbursts at school, and which unfortunately affects me and my peers. It's reached a point where I can't even hold discussions because my peers are being affected by these outbursts. I can't even talk to them anymore. I can't focus in class. I'm worried what's my father going to do today. And it's not like I can go home because there's always a task waiting for me some housework or some cleaning. However, I will sit by no more. I will sit, no, I will sit by no more and let my parents dictate my future. Now, I know my parents want the best for me. For parents living in a single room with their children, I know things are tough. I know we are struggling. However, I believe they can change. I want to sit down with my parents like a family. Hold discussions. I believe they should set boundaries. At some point, that my parents want the best for me. However, I believe that only I can find that path to greatness. They should allow me to explore new people. True, some may be detrimental, but others may be some of the most important people I'm going to meet in my life. They should allow me to be able to free to communicate with other people. Now, they say that most parents can do everything for their children except let them be themselves. However, I believe that at some point, my parents can really love me. They can help me. With these ways, hopefully one day I can sit down with my parents on the dinner table, ask them how it's their day, make a few jokes. I say this because with my future, I want to be responsible for it. Lastly, to the rest of the parents out there, I leave your message. The times have changed. No longer will the children sit by and let others dictate our futures. With the knowledge of the 21st century, it has changed. Thank you. Every time there is an argument, I'm always the mentor. Every time there is light, I'm always the mentor. Sometimes I go, I go deep down myself and ask myself, what have I ever done? What have I ever done to you for you guys to neglect me as if you drop my parts? Sometimes I feel like committing suicide because I do not have anyone to care of me. I feel so bad deep down there that you guys whisper about me, despite the fact that we share the same room, not knowing that I'm capable of hearing what you say. This has me deep down that you are my biological parents and would sit down and fight because I'm so bad, because you think that I'm so, because of the policies I've been changing, you will be living the same room for years and years. Please. If only we could be together like a family. If only we could collide, make guidance and principles together. If only we could be together, we would be a very strong family. But because of the neglect, always using your election, always being at home, criticizing me because I've done this, criticizing me because I've done this, this really hurts me so much that even my friends think that I'm so bad because my parents have never talked good about me. You have never attended any school function. 
and make an open this paper, but there are both of my parents. This has me so bad that I have two biological parents who would sit down in the house and put aside me for everything. If we would sit down together as families, create the bond, create the bond, not each other, we would be a very strong family with strong pillars. If we could, if we could invade custody and guidance, whereby I could express myself to you, whereby I could open myself to you, at least I would have been having good results at school. But due to the network, I do not have love. I sit down in the chamber and say things about something else. Instead of thinking the love, you guys can show me the world. That is why I'm declining in school. Please. I am sorry for whatever I have ever done to you. I just pray that we would be a strong family. If we could be together, create a strong bond, be so friendly, love each other, we would be a very strong family. If you could hear me, if you could love me, if you could show me that, at least I would have been suffering from depression and low self esteem. Please, love me, show me carefully. At least I would stand up and be like, I have two strong pillars in my shoulder. But if you don't do that, I'll end up declining and be someone so different. Himself 
whose shoulder I was to be leaning on, whose shoulder I was supposed to be a pillar, instead turned to my tormentor. I have left to battle the aftermath of all this as my grades turn from S to F's, as my esteem lowers, and actually as I trod down the path of lack of personality. Well, my prayer is I wish I would be in a position to fly back and offer what I think would be a fabulous approach to what would see the genius in me sprout to perfection. Because apparently, I trod down the verge of handling what I didn't love at all. Because I was forced to do PCB and yet I love PCB. I wish my parents, my mother, my father, would simply acknowledge my interests rather than imparting on me their first side of what success is supposed to be. I wish I would get a chance to look at my father and ask him to offer me a chance to support the humble self that is left of me, to offer a chance to define my life because my life is defined differently. That's what I want to do.
They would look at me as one of the abandoned ones. All they used to see in me was mischief. None of them would take me as a person. None of them would even listen to what I said. All I can tell you is I was confused, my friends. What did I even have to do? What did I do to them? I resorted to drugs to try to make myself fit in. Fit in the environment that my parents had created for me. I smoked cigarettes and went on to take other bad things, all because of confusion. I went to the exit of almost raping a girl. Trust me, I was confused on this. It wasn't my doing, it wasn't me. I was just driven by my own parents' negligency. I was confused. I'm trying to look at the life that I was in, trust me. I even reached an extent of trying to run away from home. Three days, four days a week, but I decided to return because of confusion. All this for what? I became anxious. I became unsettled. All these things happened to me because of confusion. I was confused, I tell you. So I asked myself a question through my confusion. Why couldn't my parents tell me what is right? Why wouldn't they acknowledge me for being their son? Why wouldn't they sit down and listen and tell me that this is right, this is wrong, leave it our son? Through my confusion, I tried to ask myself so many questions. Why didn't they see that I was wrong? Why didn't they make me feel socially unstable? Why didn't they stop me from being stressed? I almost told a woman's past. Nearly did she fall in an accident. So now I ask myself the question. Why don't parents get this kind of world that they see? Why don't they tell the children that the world the children are living in is toxic? Let them tell us to abstain from drugs. Let them stop the confusion that I lived in, my friends. Let them stop them from doing bad actions. Let the parents at least look at us kids and know that we are facing anxiety and depression. Through the confusion, we nearly even commit suicide. I'm telling you, my friends, through my confusion. That did become my worst life. I was confused. But the question is, is my confusion going to happen to you? Is the confusion that I had going to be solved by the parents? Are they going to look at my confusion as the best way of solving the problems in the society? I was confused. The question I need is only one. Can't we have a good world? A world where my parents can tell their children what is right and what's wrong and tell them that we can get a sustainable universe? I was confused. But do you want your child to end up like me? Do you want them to be grown to be good? I respect this. Thank you. Alright, thank you. She didn't think I saw. So listen. See, I'm going to do it. I understand the name Jesus. The name is my own. How you were instructed to have. That's the name of the name. Really, I had to talk to you and I had to find that myself. And you know what going to happen? He told me they're going to choose one person. And they give him their time. I'm one. And then there's other people in his head. I mean, my head is right now. Then my mother doesn't get a story from her. It's such a fascinating how she says, I was just worried. I used to be awful. But I don't feel this about her. But she says, her friends with his daughter, she keeps advising me that I should actually keep up with his friends. At the same time, this is the same man. This is not a good friend. She said, this is not a good friend. I really don't know how to do it. Tell me a story of how you can actually do what you say. Ask me that. How does it feel? One day I woke up and I was in charge of the thing. Because I really feel bad. I really feel like every time I'm in that place, if you want to check my phone, there's no privacy in my phone. I actually feel like I share my WhatsApp with him. And he doesn't trust me. Please tell him to trust me because I'm his only son. Yeah. That's what I am trying to do. To get his trust. But he has got to earn my trust. And I don't think I have this. And I won't give up on it. That's the truth. I'll give up on it. I'm telling you that. I'm mistreated and I will not Every time these days, people see me around when I'm actually moving, they'll be like, Man, how is your father treating you? How come it's going to How are you doing? Functions to how to help them. And in the end of it all, my friends see me as a local person. They get me to be fair. I'm so tired. I'm so tired. And for the final second that I actually don't have my friends to be with me, they get me to drugs. I do think they're not best. I don't have my best friends. But tell him I need his trust. Tell him. I actually need the end of it to be part of the script. Because if I tell him, I ask him a question, please ask him. 
how does he feel? If one day I woke up and I was never aware, because I'm his only son, I want his love. Tell him, please give me some love. Because I really feel like I'm lost in his power. If I'm lost in his power, that's when my element is going wrong. And I'm so insistent with him. And I'm never, never going back to that place. And this really comes and leads me upon this place. So give me a chance to be here with him. Because I really miss my old home, and it's my mom and my dad. But if I can't have that, I can't answer that. I'm really tired of what's going to come out. And I'm really tired because suicide is going to be a thing about right now. And I told him, like, man, I'm tired of it. Born in a town where a vegetation. Born in a town where hope is like a vegetation to that very color I use. A woman had to live down like bad nurses. If that is the scarcity of my home, in my own home, how many out there are like me? It was me, my single parent, in a single room and in a single town. We live in a sarcastic heart. Happy by appearance and sad deep down in our hearts. And sad. And sad deep down in the inside of me. I appreciated and aspired to be like my mates, but that is the greatest fantasy I have in my life. But at school, brothers and sisters, my mates are living the life that I have always desired to live. Having one's, having one's space, feeling love, and above all, being taken to be her priority is what I have been seeking for. But here yeah, I am being optionized, rejected by my fellow kids and my own parents. I had thought that he would be my hope lifter, my inspiration, but guess what, brothers and sisters? It is always exasperation, condemnation, and rejection I get from the very one I thought he was my Therefore, therefore I stand here before you representing the fellow adolescents who absorb our rights and their rights are being abused, are being denied. A right to education, a right to speech, to mention that if you remember our love, fathers and mothers, a right denied is a right, a right delay is a right denied. That's why we are calling upon the government of Uganda to sensitize parents on how to, to sensitize parents on the rights of children. Ladies and gentlemen, we can shatter the parents having this kind of adults in the world. As I conclude, and to be my fellow adolescents, join me to raise our voices to the end of this practice that reduces our self esteem. For together we stand, divided before, for we are the light of the world and the future yet to come. I remember you, Thank you so much. Alright, thank you so much. Firstly, an adolescent is a person between the stage of childhood and adulthood. This practice should be first in the way we adapt to it at times in productivity in a receptive way in which they want to learn and learn or relearn from their parents and peers. And at other times people become biased due to the various experiences which may have affected them positively or negatively. Those who take it in positively would have the urge to learn more about their transitions and the urge to be guided into the right direction that that's why the adolescents need to be befriended and approached to discover their experiences, thoughts, and perceptions towards different things. So many should think of oh, what about this? Can you take this? What would be your idea? Of? In this way, the adolescents feel safe, appreciated thought about and understood. That will take away the fear of neglect from parents and peers. This same problem would enable them to open up about their insecurities, for example, their mistakes, 
torment. They feel positive and physical, motivated to focus more on their grades, talents, and goals or aims. So, as you can find in this, parents should avail time for their children so as to create in them a perception of trust, a perception of trust, safety, love, and care. A healthy mindset, because a healthy nation is a productive nation, and a productive nation is a wealthy nation. My guys, if I could, I would tell you how I would be. If I could, I would tell you how this is how in the very poor just put a few out of the city. I feel separated, I feel compared, I feel compacted. My very poor was in the end. They don't imagine me as a lawyer that I want to be calm. My brother imagine me and think of me as a farmer that I want to be. Just because they were about to want, they want me to have a home, to get a home, to work at that day, and leave. But that's not me, that's what I want to be calm. At times, when I build the apartment, he shouts at me, comes shouting at me. What I do, I don't sleep, but I live on my phone, texting my friends for hours. Does it make me a better? No, I save up my one to three thousand. Just to talk about him, just to socialize. But he feels that he wants to go to He feels that he's being stepped on. He's not going to be very much in his house. At times, I can't even look at a poem. At times, I can't even look at a speech. Trying to visualize my future, but he doesn't feel safe. In his own house. He feels like I'm a threat to him. My passion, my own passion for saving humanity, for fighting for the rights of people, that consumed me. But yet, he wants me to have a way. He wants me to have a way in my hands. He wants me to have a way in my hands. He needs to let him know that my ambitions, my personal needs, are taking me. They are consuming me. What he wants is what I want. What he wants from me is what I want. He expects me to pass my culture, biology, but he does me. Does he even know how many people feel biology? Does he know how many people put A and B? Look at the past eight months. How many people put this marks? But he wants me to become the cream of this world. The, the bubble of this one. He wants to become that always a perfect. That's what I mean. I don't really feel that I want to become what he wants me to do. Do you make it worse? That one is like a joke. He wants to know where I am. He wants to know what I'm doing, what I'm thinking. But he can't put that in his place. Um, I tell you right now, I'm always in front. I want you to tell you that. The day I tell you at a point, I shall get a letter. That's what she called me a farmer. I could go, that's not me. To be honest, I would never do that. But that's because I cannot in any more. I cannot take out of the long space that you put me in. I'm feeling like a place to be in the very moment I'm in. My parents, they have made me feel like they want me to be calm. But I don't want to be that. All I need is my personal space. All I need is my master's place. Some sense of trust to make decisions that are right for me. Some sense of trust to chase after my own dreams. To be the magic in the game I want to become. Honestly, I'm drawn. I need help. I need help. I need to realize myself. I'm confined in this place. Please just go. And time again, not to complain and to keep it in. But keeping it in is driving me insane. I tried countless of times not to get involved in my parents' issues that I get trapped in against my will. Yes, I understand we, our space is limited, but it does not mean you cannot try your best to keep me out of your matters, to keep me out of your issues, for I am a child. You fight, you argue, you, you show all these and then exhibit all these behaviors in front of me. How do you expect me to live? How do you expect me to behave after you show me this? Father comes home, drunk, almost every night, and begins to beat up my mother. I have grown a terrible fear to marriage. I have become, I have become something I don't understand because of so much insecurity. I have grown to hate men. And all this is because of you. How do you expect me to live and be highly normal and get married like any other girl child? My parents, all I do is beg you, I beg of you. Maybe if you had 
tried to keep me out of your issues by settling them between yourselves. Maybe when I'm at school and not home. Maybe, just maybe I would have that peace. Maybe if you had tried to listen to me whenever I would come to you to tell you and instead of pushing me away, maybe I would not feel as insecure as I do seeing other children with happy homes and happy families at school. I feel even more depressed that my home cannot even match up. I have tried to be silent, but today you must hear me out. You need to listen to me. I am your child and you are constantly damaging my mentality. I am, I am emotionally unstable. Please, dear parents, I need you to listen to me. I need you to see them, to see me as someone who is not of your age. Despite staying in the same room, I really need to see you to cross paths with me. I go to bed some nights with a heavy burden on my shoulders, wondering whether my father made it out of that car and so by now to come back. Wondering whether my mother was not attacked on her way home. With this, sharp word travels very fast. The situation that I'm going through has already spread to my school. Everyone knows that my father at this point is a drunk, that my mother is a late night drunk. I go to class in a body, in a body of trying to understand what is being presented to me by the teacher. But at the same time, at the back of my head, wondering if my father made it back home my life. And with this, my academics are gradually going down to the ground. It has reached an extent that the school is even putting into question whether I should continue going and has given me a willing to do a living Look at it. My father, my mom, who are having different problems, different impacts, are when they can actually get the time to see with me. How one thing and about the other. Do you know what happened during the day? Do you know what happened when I was at work? Do you know what happened when I was at work? When will you allocate time to me? When will you ask? How was your day? How was class? Was the teacher fine? Did you understand what you said? That is what I need to sit them down at the table and actually advocate for this. I need to find out where the problem is coming about. All, every child deserves the right, deserves the care of a parent. And parent. I am being neglected. Currently, I am being put aside. I would like to push for this. To push for my father to use the excess amount of money he gets from his Instead of buying the alcohol, the Uganda warranty, to put it into the amount to get a two bedroom window such that I can actually get a friend's With this, I would like to advocate. And every child who is in this deserves a repartition. Thank you. My dear friends, I'm an adolescent. I'm living in a world that I don't understand. I am different from what I hear my other friends writing about. Oh. Sounds like paradise. I feel looked up in my own home. I am feeling abandoned and ignored. I am way too much in my emotions lately. I am not concentrating. I tried to come out it. But even my parents don't want to listen to me. Go to my parents. I think I even forgot to the just. I am so dreaded in my thoughts that I'm not concentrating in my studies. And all this because of what? 
friends to look at or oh, they will have my personal space. Oh, I get that you don't have money to have super shrimps at home. But, my dear parents, this, we can resolve this issue by either respecting my personal space or maybe setting rules about each and every man's property at home. Please, my parents, help me swim out of this emotional torture. I am going through because I do not see who else can help me now. I want to have an air towards me and hear what I think, hear what I'm going through, and what I intend to do. Because I'm being eaten up inside. All I need is time to interact with you and try to understand each other so that I, I really want to go back the way I was. Free from, free from thoughts, smile on my face, and having my best friends. But this, in order to achieve this, I need you and your parents. It has grown so rampant, especially in this generation. It's both at home, it's at school, it's a little escape for us, the children. And when it comes to home, it's usually done by the parents themselves. Who are supposed to be our guide? You see, when the when a parent, if a parent is supposed to emotional abuse to their child, they should usually get that a parent is being either toxic or narcissistic. When a parent is toxic to their child, that means they are instilling bad behavior in their minds. Or by simply them by acting, sorry, abusing between abusing themselves, acting with each other. These things can start children. They really do. And then when they are being narcissistic, maybe a child, I come to my parents and I'm like, my parents, I really need your help. I need a idea. I need you to listen to me. And then you tell me how you're too busy, how you cannot have that time, that little time I need for you to listen to me. And when it comes to school, this is usually done through bullying. Fellow students actually bully fellow students. Maybe because they feel better than them. Maybe because they feel the other children are maybe not as wealthy as them. Maybe they feel that this child is smaller than me, so I have the upper hand, I have the advantage. So children get scared from different ways. And at the end of the day, we need our parents to be our guides, to be our to console us. But then at times, even parents cannot be cannot give us the shoulder we need to cry. When you come when a child is emotionally damaged, because emotional damage is literally and it's basically just non-physical torture. Someone that doesn't have to touch me to emotionally damage is to be through ones. You see, children are very sensitive, especially at the adolescent stage. They need to take a lot of words to heart. And then when a child is emotionally abused, they become insecure and timid and scared. They, be, they find it so hard to open up. They have no self-esteem. They often seek and grant for validation in so many different ways. For instance, especially for a girl child, when you see a girl at the adolescent stage, this is the thing we mean sometimes they are approached by the opposite gender. When the girl child is approached and she needs and fits for attention, and that man is giving her the attention she's been so badly craving for, who's to say she will not choose to trust him, she'll begin to trust that man even more than you can pay it. I feel like mental, mental, emotional abuse has become a very big problem. It can even be the reason as to why we are having so very many teenage pregnancies in our country. Parents no longer have that time. Parents think that once they provide that food and that clothes, then everything is well. But that physical state is not, it's not, that's not, that's not, sorry, the physical state is not what parenting is. Parenting is not about guidance, it's about being involved. If you are a parent, are you there? Are you involved in your child's life? Do you know what is happening? Or not? This, well, this can simply be solved if that parental system is put through and parents are told exactly how they are supposed to, how they are supposed to listen to their children because children wish to act at the same stage where they are the most sensitive. 
they need that appearance, guidance. Searching is all about guidance. It's not about putting food on the table. It's not about clothes. It's about being able to reach out life. I feel like if the parents are too, are too really going to their children and give them the attention they need and desire so badly, then there would be no more emotional abuse. You see, a parent is and will remain the first teacher to their child. And we cannot change that. So I feel like the parent is emotional. As we in school, we get up and meet people. That depends because all of us have a different experience on how we do in school. Some of us come from, come from other schools or like different schools. I don't have no friends. And this point of time, this is very hard. It's so hard to actually change your critique into the church and your friends. That's what makes it hard. But now, as a story like that, I'll actually be myself. Falling in love. Running for a woman I actually want, and in the end of it all, she hurts me. I guess my friends will tell you that. In the world that we're living in right now, it's no longer a conversation, it's no longer a format how they actually have to figure out know, anything of how they feel like, how they actually do it up. Most of the time, it's actually the first. What the hell is the question? But by TV, I'm being motivated. People are being contested. They're rich and they're poor. They're looking at people, they're looking at themselves, they're looking at them. That's the world we're living on. That's the world we're living on. And not of the people that will compare to everyone who is anyhow because criticism is actually not happening in such a world. And for us who are better, we might actually find a new level. Maybe it would be the same, and maybe it would be able to have to do it. And then you start to vibrate it hurts me. I get hurt. Now, this is the world that like, when you come talk to people, you see that they see that person on there. You actually are showing things. This is the one where you get such ones that you are showing things and people actually start to separate. They feel weird, they feel awkward around other people. So they step back. They don't want to touch the social with people. Maybe I'm the best person in the world. I can't tell them. I can't go into clubs, I don't go into clubs, I don't go into clubs. Just when I met people who are actually open minded, they told me how you should never care about how to help people about you because you're not them and they're not you. You're actually much more better, but I tell you, much more leave them for whatever they want to talk about you. And as they say, I'm one from Israel, but his man keeps quiet when he's a Chinese or visitor. That is what they always do from a poetry club. I fell in love, as I told you in the beginning, I fell in love with a girl. I want to make this so happy. I wish they were going to answer because she made me love to her and I love her. Because that's what we want. That's what actually we want. Don't you run for this woman and everyone says that we're doing this for you. It's our privilege. I don't know what I was saying. I never thought pastors actually do that because I thought that it's pretty good. A pastor gave me a shouting, so good. Sit along there by the education that you have to love and love. Although she told me it's a very healthy thing to actually have someone who's near that, to comfort you in your bad times. She may not be the best, start as a spirit, tell me. She may not be the best, but I should get to know that person. May not be a very good girl, but someone who can listen to me. Because deep down, I am so depressed. I think if I actually see depression, I think it was like I was depression. And neglection. Feeling every time that when you're around people, they are much more better than you. Like come out of your pocket, how do you do that in this? So you can be better than that's the truth. That's what you can do. That's why I'm very school. You want to be able to say, okay, that is actually too good at what he does. He's actually too good. You don't need to like me. I'm actually good at what I do this. But for that point, I want to be better than you. And deserve to have a race. They say that all these last few minutes are of the mental, not of the physical. And I can bear for that. Today I come here as a storyteller, a survivor of the sort. Because I lived through something that is literally killing the adolescent youth of our country. And this is emotional abuse. By emotional abuse, we look at the use of emotions 
such as guilt, such as fear, to control and manipulate people. But we cannot look at it as a definition. Because I have been here for so many years. We have to look at it by the actions. Emotional abuse is the relentless criticism, the unfair comparisons, the hurtful statements that get even a little bit physical, which people use to manipulate others. Around the course of my educational journey in my age primary, I remember I was a victim in a sexual assault. There was this really little girl in my screen, tall, pretty dark eyes. I am really had a question at the time. However, I can't exactly say the feelings were mutual. So this girl used to make fun of me. She used to particularly comment about my nose, say it was exceptionally large, bigger than the rest. She would make jokes in class, comments, memes. Be no cute, I mean, to them it was a joke, but to me, it's one of the most painful things in my life. I tell the story today because it really shows what emotional abuse can do to a person. I remember after this, I stopped trusting people. I believe that everybody who was talking to me was merely trying to get a funny line. I believe everybody who came and approached me merely wanted something funny. I stopped trusting people because I believe that anybody who would come and approach me made me believe that was just a me. I became a slave to her. I let her manipulate me because I was fearful of what she wanted. All because she wanted control. All she because she wanted to be a queen. Just because her mother raised her to be a princess. Typical of what you call various narcissism. However, I come here as a survivor and tell my fellow researchers that there is a solution to this problem. That there are ways we can fight this fight in our society. Now, first of all, what we must realize is that we can't change people. We can't change everyone. The hard truth is that people are different. Some people are raised like this and others are raised like that. So, what do we do? One, we realize that we can't fix everyone. So you must first try to accept who we are. I accepted my largeness. Apparently, it's a characteristic of typical Baganda who are very free in society today. So nowadays, whenever anyone tries to criticize it, they stand up for and say, even amongst the Baganda, they are false. The father I run the truth ones. Secondly, I feel like we should create some more networks. Especially in our modern day society, we are more connected than ever using technology, even in secondary schools. All around the world, we can hold conventions, we can organize meetings, of course, come together and share their experiences. We see it in so many areas war veterans, drug addicts. They come together to share their experiences, lessen their burdens. And for this, we can grow together as youth. Now, I would have come here and simply stated facts. I would have come here and gave you statistics, data, but I see as the youth that I want us to grow together. Thank you.
these children in that self pocket. They, they will not be able to stand here as I am telling you all these words. Because they are being called stupid and achievement. But the real question here today how can we deal with all these children, these problems to have been through all these things in their lives? We can actually start creating awareness campaigns for these children. We can actually get out there and tell people what they deserve. We can actually guide and talk to these children on who they are. We can go there and tell children, oh, you're supposed to be, you're supposed to be treated like this. Oh, you're beautiful. We can get out there and start doing something about this. Today, I want all the you guys to imagine this power. Picture a world where children were only fed on positivity. These children are coming to class and they're told, oh, you look smart today. Oh, you gave a beautiful answer today in class. Just imagine that world. We need this world today. Because in this world, children will actually achieve their goals. They'll actually have this courage to become the greatest doctors, the greatest lawyers, the greatest people this world has ever known, the greatest influencers. Where would this world be without emotional music? In an African family, we believe that throw the, throw the word and throw the child. This has been a mistake that has been coming from generation to generation. Children needs, dreams, and expectations have been shut down due to parental wishes. Imagine, currently in my, in my society, the UKE is written out above, but the parent is not in a child of scoring no points in this year, forgetting that the, the actually the child wanted to perceive history and wanted to do law. Parents, because my mother wanted to be a doctor, I'm going to be a doctor. Why? This. In schools, the same concept has been brought up. Parents no longer have time for us. They give us to teachers. Please, Mr. Mr. John, take care of my son. Teachers use the street method. That, that was ages ago. This head has been piling like Mount Zion, and we no longer can't keep quiet. This, I believe that the time is always right to do what's right. Let's begin in three, two, one. They are ordinary people. But deep inside, their hearts tell different stories. Bruised and battered, clashed and torn, those are all the details of emotional abuse. As one individual is explained here, in another demise, another individual is breaking to pieces. All the visible to their hearts is the tale of an emotional abuse person. Emotional abuse is a form of abuse that can tell the use of non physical, <coughs> the use of non physical behavior, aiming at having a person still non physical. Emotional abuse is something that's affecting people very greatly in our society. And as, as, as the current society today, we find out that we in particular are facing various emotional abuse Later on, I'll look at the effects of emotional abuse. But emotional abuse is something that's caused as a result of one ego. Ego is something that manipulates people to do various things that they're supposed to be doing in society. And as a result of this, we've got emotional abuse happening in various places in our society. Not only that, emotional abuse is also as a result of pride. And pride is something that we associate with narcissism. Even the fact that an individual wants to entitle themselves to the music and therefore to themselves as superior, but it's pretty hard to that you know, something that matters to say. This is really wrong. Because the effects that, so the effects that emotional abuse brings on people are things that kind of unnoticed. And particularly in the youth, I'll speak about that today. Yes, emotional abuse brings a lot of trauma in the Trauma is something that can lead to post traumatic stress disorder, something that can inhibit the life of our citizens, something that can inhibit the life of adolescents, and in particular, adolescents are people that are growing. So when they get traumatized, once it's something they can continue, and a chain reaction of activities can be followed. Post traumatic, sorry, emotional abuse can also be. So that's also bring about statistically in the life of the individual. And if the individual looks at themselves as they've reached the state of life, a state of life whereby they feel moving towards the best thing because they believe that they're 
their emotional states will be compatible. Something that we don't want to say. Something that we want to eradicate to say. Later on, I'll tell you about how we can eradicate this. Just be prepared. Emotional abuse. Emotional abuse is something that we need to add. And then it gets stuck to you. And then it gets stuck to some stuck to each and every person that's listening to you. Through the receipt of intelligent sensitization of people, we find out that we are able to educate people on one, their rights. People need to be taught their rights and their limits. People need to be taught that when I reach a certain state of abuse by a friend, I'm bringing quite a little bit across and therefore I need to get a little bit stop. We need to enforce harsh conditions in this community because we realize that a matter of fact, emotional abuse will continue in society given the fact that you don't put any punishments on this view. So, harsh punishments is something to take off. And then, and then lastly, we need to organize guidance sessions for these people, particularly the youth, given the fact that these are people who are still developing. Their emotions need to be protected because at the end of the day, there are people that make the decision to drive out or out of other This is the emotional balance. This is how we can end it. Now, when we do A, B, and C, we find out that we break the cycle of emotional abuse, and so we get rid of our fights. It's a rate of critical community. But by simply doing this, we are step out. And when we do this, we start now. No time to stop. Thank you. Five monkeys are placed into a cage. The name of this monkey group is placed at the bottom of a ladder on top of their bananas. Immediately to the banana, immediately the monkey tries to reach the banana. The people that come up here still before I see what I would need. Soon enough, each monkey has tried to get the bananas. In time, they start beating each other down whenever one tries to step up around the ladder. A new monkey is inside this cage. This monkey has not been there. When he tries to grab a banana, this is his very first day. The other monkey is beat him up. Beat him up, beat him up, beat him up, beat him up again and again until he realizes that he can never get the bananas. This happens again and again and again until the until the cage is filled over time with monkeys that were not even there in the first stage of the experiment. I'd like to explain what this five month experiment in sociology has to do with the cycle of emotional abuse. Now, we all know that emotional abuse involves controlling someone's, controlling someone based on their emotions, trying to manipulate them, trying to, trying to undermine them, embarrass them, shame them, blame them. We have their different techniques. Of course, you have insults. You can dismiss them. There is threats, constant monitoring, excessive jealousy, and these are threats exhibited constantly by narcissistic parents. A person that stays in a household, be the one or two narcissistic guardians, might not have the access to information that they need to step back and realize what kind of experiments that they are in. If we want to tackle this kind of problem in schools today, we need to realize that every single cycle can be broken by first understanding how it is and how we understand what something is by assessing it. We need to acknowledge the system that is present, the generational trauma that is preceded in generation, 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 in which the very first one had a traumatic experience. There was no room to vent out this trauma. There was no room to explain the emotions these emotions transferred into psychological, psychological timings. In case any single thing happened, any single event happened in that person's life, they will do something in specific. So when we understand this, what needs to be done? We need to acknowledge as well that if we're to tackle this problem in schools, the higher ups have to be involved, whether it's the president, or his wife, Her Excellency Jane, <coughs> Her Excellency the Prime Minister, sorry, Her Excellency um, the Minister of Education and Sports. We need to talk to teachers, the head teachers, get them to acknowledge that mental health is something that we need to have discussed. Once a week, maybe two hours, the entire school convenes 
and maybe we can tackle this problem. We also need education on such subjects. When people are trained to assess such situations, to assess how different categories of emotional abuse can surface, to assess how a person um, that lives in an emotionally abusive situation can thrive or is affected, people are able to step back and realize what exactly is wrong. And then when assessment and education has been done, we also need action. We all know that the big, the, big, the, big, the bottom, the pyramid, is the biggest part. When the people at the bottom, the grassroots, understand such challenges do not concept, they are able to stand up to such prejudice. And that is how we talk about the Thank you. Thank you. In a certain school in Kampada in 2022, an elder student came to school in the morning. He was caught by the teacher on duty and he was accused of using drugs. He was accused of not having to use his school fees. He was accused of the poor performance that is happening. After all this, he was threatened to be expelled. After all that matter, this student went out to class. At that moment, he became mentally perturbed, thinking about what is going to happen, speaking about what is happening at home and, and what is happening at school right now. Then, by midday of the day, this student decided to jump to the highest building of the school in order to commit suicide. But why all this? Narcissism, toxic parenting, all this combined with the teasing, bullying, the undercooking, the undermining of teachers to, for, to the student due to the poor performance of the student, ladies and gentlemen, it's demolishing the next Abraham Lincoln's and Barack Obama of our generation. But why should we have to reach at such a level? Ladies and gentlemen, the increasing number of school dropouts right now is at a certain time is caused by this spice. What am I trying to talk about? This wise, a student comes at school, is very biased about what is happening at home, the rootfulness at home, the neglection at home, and when coming to school, this very student is experiencing this biases, the bullying, the teasing, there are what happens. This child is going to become biased with everything. So he or she is going to secretly do a house. What do you need to do? Obviously, you just have to drop out of school. But I but if all this is happening, shall we, have, shall we really have productful and presentable citizens in our country? I do believe in order to properly solve the problem, one should start from its roots. What am I trying to talk about? In this case, I'm trying to tell you we should start from the parents, because the parents are the very natural of so the children. The parents are the people that spend most of the time with their children, hereby, these parents should, should provide a toxic free environment to the students. They should be able to understand their children, what are their capabilities, what are they in that this child is, if all is well at home, this child is going to go to school with a positive mindset. Then we come to the teachers. In the duty for the teachers in this case is to provide a positive learning environment for these students in that they are going to do away with the underlooking, the undermining of the student just because he's performing poorly and creating an environment which is going to favor anybody who is doing properly, who is doing poorly, so that he or she can have a prosperous life. Then after that we come to the student's fraternity. Student fraternity are responsible, they are going to create activities which are going to make this person very active. In that this person is not going to be able to stick around thinking about what is happening, thinking about what he's doing at that time, just because of each and every thing that is happening. This, this person is going to be active, for we know a positive and active mind is that which will pursue and persevere in all complications. Ladies and gentlemen, we all want development. We all want development. But how can we have this development if such vices are eating up our, our children? How can we have this development if our children are being denied the right to have their lives and ideas expressed unto the world? Thereby, I call upon each and every person. I'm very much sure that 
Ele não está dizendo que ele não passou, né? This is the kind of world that our children are facing. A world whereby people don't feel to 
be alone. Try to see this world and think with me how best are we going to solve such a problem in the world today? Yeah. Try to look at the emotional problems befalling our people. The emotional problems leading up on suicidal attempts, whereby girls kill each other, boys kill themselves, because they feel like they're not safe or around anybody in this way. But I don't believe in that world, because we can fix that world in different ways. Let us encourage our children to work together, to feel socially upright, and feel like they fit in a society. Look at schools whereby they can put up their grades if they feel that they are feeling that they can be into a society and they are safe in it. They up their grades. This is the world we want. We want sustainable students. We want our children to have a good life. Necessity parenting has become a problem whereby parents don't think about their children. But why parents? Why? Why not encourage our children? Let us steal our necessity for once and put up a world of peace and security. A world whereby our children can have a good day. A world whereby children should work together. Children should analyze their problems. Children should even fight a fundamental of making themselves feel noticed in this world. Why do you think that this world is not possible? Yet it is possible. Look at the things you're gonna get out of this world that are very radical. Things like children are going to be having sustainability. Their working rates are going to be high. Their great power is going to be high. They're always going to feel safe around each other. Let's get in good and sustainable stability. Trying to look at the obligation of future. The future that we want for our children. Is it a future of anxiety? A future of suicidal attempts? A future whereby children cannot be emotionally upright, a future whereby children don't feel themselves, I say no to such a future, a future of all those problems. So I believe if we all work together to make our children feel safe, to give them good empire, to give them good, to give them a lot of encouragement, to go and even give them that they are the people of the way, let us show our children who they are, let us make them feel safe, let us show them that within this status quo, they can live hand in hand with themselves. That's the only drugs. They will not kill each other. They will not even resolve to those kind of problems. And with that, we shall have created emotionally upright students who don't feel to emotional abuses ever again. Thank you.